Hi, I'm Duewa Frazier, and you're listening to episode 10 of Nerdacity Podcast. Today, my guest is Dr. Dominiqua M. Griffin, PhD, NCC. Dr. Griffin owns Black Women PhDs, a digital platform that celebrates Black women earning doctorates, and she is a tenure track assistant professor of school counseling at California State University, Fresno. She focuses on school counseling, multiculturalism, and international education to advance school counseling systems domestically and internationally. Dr. Griffin centers Barbados school counseling and understanding their roles and challenges. Dr. Griffin's research extends to school family community partnerships, and she is one of the co-authors on a collaborative book chapter. Dr. Griffin is interested in influencing policy regarding counseling services for K-12 and university settings. She attended the Pennsylvania State University for her PhD in counselor education and supervision with a dual title in comparative and international education. She worked previously as a school counselor in Washington, D.C., where she earned her master's degree from Howard University. She also earned a B.A. degree from the University at Buffalo. Dr. Griffin serves as a board member for the Global Center for School Counseling, Outcome Research, Evaluation, and Development. And she is an editor for the peer-reviewed journal, This Bronx girl received honorable mention from the American Association for Blacks in Higher Education and the dissertation grant from Penn State's Africana Research Center for her work on school counseling in Barbados. Follow at Black Women PhDs on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I hope you enjoy this episode. Thanks for listening. Hi, Dr. Griffin. Hello, Dr. Frazier. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for joining me here on the podcast. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Great. And you sound wonderful. Okay. So we're going to get into it. Today, we're discussing a topic that I have high interest with, and I felt you were the perfect person to dialogue about this. And and it's about the recent op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal titled, is there a doctor in the house? Not if you need an MD. And the author chooses to discuss Dr. Jill Biden's doctoral title, if you will, but he doesn't agree with her using it. And I just wanted to know your thoughts about this uh, at this time. So this is just completely asinine. We see It's misogyny on display and really running rampant. Um, It's the holiday season. Tis the season to drop the discrimination, to be quite honest. Uh, Why are we doing this in 2020? That's my question. Why would something like this be published? Exactly. And it's really outrageous. In the first paragraph of the op-ed, not only that, um, the author first calls her He calls her Mrs. Biden, then calls her Jill, and then calls her kiddo. It's like the disrespect just keeps going word after word. What do you think about that? So that's not even right there about her doctoral title. Now he's calling her a kid. He's calling her by a first name. You know, when I saw that, I was just completely disgusted because to think that this is going to be the incoming um, first lady of the United States, right? If this is a white woman that he's doing this to, it just made me think what's happening to black and brown women that are obtaining their doctorate degrees in whatever field they may be obtaining their doctorate. What are some of the things that we have to face? That was one of my initial thoughts because it's like to see her title, her accolades just be put on display and really showcased in such a negative way. It it hurt my heart to know that this was happening to another woman. Right. And then then about the work that I do with black women PhDs and seeing how we internalize our experiences 
it just made me think I can't even imagine what's happening to us. Mm. So true. And, you know, Dr. Griffin, you bring up an excellent point. And by the way, I must give you supreme kudos, congratulations, and also gratitude for everything you do on behalf of Black women uh, with doctorates uh, as the founder and owner of Black Women PhDs. You are really spreading uh, the news and the celebration of uh, Black women who are attaining this level of uh, academic achievement and education. And uh, with everything that you have going on as a professor yourself and a scholar, it is absolutely amazing um, that you uh, take the time out of your uh, life and uh, purpose to also reach out to other uh, Black female academics to promote, um, to essentially promote us and celebrate us. And so I, I wanted to thank you for that and take my hat off to you for that. You are absolutely welcome. And I just want to say thank you to all of the women that continue to submit their bios and share their stories. <laughs> I'm, I'm always humbled by the stories. And that's why it was just so frustrating to see an article like this published, especially in 2020. Like we survived this year. Folks mm. are out here you know, earning their degrees across fields. Let's just mention that for sure. You know, like getting PhDs, obtaining EDDs, uh, DHAs, DMAs, DBAs, so many different ones, PsyDs, um, OTDs. Like there's so yes. many uh, different doctorate degrees and to say that she shouldn't use her title because she earned an EDD and just just the wording it was just absolutely horrendous to see um, it really was and I, I see the stories I know what women are going through uh, I have my own experience um, and the way he talks about it is just it's absolutely ridiculous and it just makes me think of that male gaze right um, when we think about the work that women are doing, we're not just here for the male view and because of their consumption. That's not what we're here for. Right. And, you know, Dr. Griffin, you bring up an excellent point when you talk about the male view. And speaking of the male view, this, as I go further into his article, the author discusses that he was able to teach uh, for 30 years without a doctorate or any advanced degree, he says he only has a BA uh, from his undergraduate university. I was shocked and appalled when I read that. Nothing wrong with a, a, a bachelor's degree. However, when we talk about, as you mentioned, what women uh, have had to go through to attain these degrees, we know it is years and years of hard work. I know for myself, I have three masters. And I know you do as well, several masters and a doctorate. And so we go, we jump through the hoops just to be able to get the door uh, seemingly open for us to teach in academia and all the other scholarly tracks. And so for him to be able to have this platform to say he was able to teach for 30 years with a bachelor's, to me is a slap in the face. And what do you think about that? Yes, yeah, so that was... A complete slap in the face and I just want to say I, I only have a master's but I have a, a doctorate degree um, in counselor education and a dual title in comparative and international education um, but to see that and who he's talking about right so Dr. Biden she has a bachelor's she has two masters and a doctorate of education, similar to you with multiple masters. Right. Women go through so many different milestones, just the milestone of obtaining the doctorate degree in general. But before that, so many folks don't realize, like you do have the option to go from a bachelor's to a doctoral program, right? But what yes. mostly stated is going through going to obtain your bachelor's, then your master's degree. Some folks sometimes pick up multiple master's degrees. They may end up entering into the workforce at some point and then going back to obtain a doctorate degree, which could be right. five to seven years, if not longer than that. Then yes. while you're processing the journey of itself, applying for the 
doctoral programs, obtaining funding, the comprehensive exam, the Mm -hmm. proposal, obtaining IRB approval. Oh my gosh. Collecting data, writing the dissertation, the defense. And the then defense. you might get some edits after that. Like the my... final. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. Um, so just the entire experience. And then once you add on that label women, right, um, life may be happening for us while Indeed. obtaining the doctoral degree. So somewhere Indeed. along that line. Someone may be pregnant. They may experience a marriage. They may try to start dating. Um, a miscarriage could potentially happen. They could be the exactly. caretaker of someone. And to think about 2020, a pandemic. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Griffin, that was me. I just finished yes. in a pandemic in August, girl. And it was pure H-E-L. L. Yes. Well, it's a huge (laughs) congratulations to you for surviving and just girl finishing up like uh, just oh my gosh, kudos to you. Let's let's clap for you because that is huge, Doctor (laughs) Frazier. Thank you so much, Doctor Griffin. And I'm not saying mine is any more hard one than anyone else's, but you mentioned a pandemic, and none of us saw that coming as of fall 2019. I was collecting my data and doing all of that. And then next thing you know, when it's time to really get into the grit, grit of finishing, this hits, we're on lockdown, you're, you're f- facing uncertainty, uncertainty, you're already stressed out to the hilt. It was a real trip and I had to pray every day for help, for strength and for my own, uh, just to keep going. Right. And you know what? He spoke about um, the fact like when she started her doctoral degree that the terror would have disappeared by that time. And it's like just listening to everything that you went through in 2020 and 2019, right, throughout your process. It doesn't matter when someone is obtaining the degree. There are still hurdles that women have to go through to obtain that. It's, so it's so just true. hearing a story. <laughs> And just... <laughs> thank you so much for that, Dr. Griffin. And I'm sure, you know, as this episode is released, it will be a relief for so many other um, women doctorates and, you know, scholars in general, when they hear you say that, wow, we're not the only ones to go through this. That's right. We've all had to, we've all, you know, endured and gone through um, the various hurdles. Mm-hmm. And so, Dr. Griffin, I also want to mention, you know, just taking a look at some of the statistics on, you know, since he wants to come at Dr. Uh, Jill Biden and, you know, if if Dr. Biden was a man, of course, we don't think that that would have occurred. But, you know, Forbes published an article in just 2018 stating that women in the United States are still earning more doctoral degrees than men in the United States. And they quote a statistic that uh, a total of 53% women in comparison to 47% of men uh, earn doctorates. And that was as of 2017, 2018. And so it's like, whoa, does this guy even know the stats? There are women that are actually out or earning uh, men in terms of doctorate degrees across the uh, different disciplines, as you mentioned. And I kind of feel like, you know, that's another reason why his comment, his, his op-ed is totally out of place and out of line and is really not even uh, based in what the uh, statistics uh, show. And so what do you, um, what would you say to that? So the statistics are there. Uh, We see that women are earning their doctorate degrees, but his comment and the misogyny that accompanies it, um, it also points to the fact that folks are still trying to keep women in a particular place. And we Mm. see that as being problematic across fields. So we know that there's still an issue um, with the number of the number of women that are obtaining doctorates in the STEM field, right? So in 2018, a little over 20% of all doctorates were women in STEM, right? So it does point to this idea that there's still markers and barriers that women have to face while obtaining their doctorate degree. Yes, we may be out 
um, performing and and earning more doctorates at this point across you know the doctorate collective, but in some fields it's still an issue for women to even get to that point. There's still that glass ceiling, um, so I think it does speak to that, and it's because we have to deal with comments such as these, uh, that misogyny, and really the sexism that women have to face. So even to see a woman in a doctoral program in the STEM field, they should be applauded because it's because of the hurdles that they would have had to uh, get through. Yes, and so true indeed. And might I ask what you just mentioned about the ceiling um, and the double standard, do you feel that that also just from your purview, um, uh, do you think that this connects to hiring at all? Just reading that this man had a bachelor's with no advanced degree, not even a master's, not even a terminal master's, like an MFA, uh, is really shocking to me because I always thought that you at least needed a master's even to teach, um, whether it's a community college or to teach as an adjunct, uh, that most universities are requiring an advanced degree. So do you feel that there is still uh, a long way to go uh, in this industry, in academia, in terms of hiring and the, and the perspective on women uh, academics getting into higher ed? Yes, there's definitely still a challenge. And the fact that he was able to obtain such a privilege, right, it does point to that white male privilege that we see and just the caucasity of him <laughs> being able right, right. to publish and say something like this. Um, but it's definitely still a challenge when women are out there on the job market. Um, I remember some of the comments that were made uh, for us or to us, I should say, when we were in the doctoral program um, and about women when they're going into their interviews, should they be pregnant around that time? The folks interviewing them now have to factor in, okay, she's pregnant, she's going to be taking a maternity leave. So there's still additional challenges that women face at the various stages of their life, right? Once they obtain a certain age, that ageism starts to play a role. And then if you're younger, you may experience some um, discrimination as well. So there's so many different things. And also factoring in uh, different identities that women may have, right? So whether it's varying ability statuses, as well as if they are part of the LGBTQ community, those are all identities that still play a role in how folks are judging them, how folks are judging their experience and what they're able to bring to the table. And the problem is we really don't have a full seat at the table. We're like now pulling up a chair, right? Mm. <laughs> and, yes. and that. And I appreciate you saying now as in just now. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Uh, yes. So once you add on um, those identity pieces, you know, um, the experience varies. Uh, we see that as a problem. Uh, we also see it in the pay, in the wage gap, I should say, um, with the wealth gap, right, and the salaries that women are obtaining. There's Black Women's Equal Pay Day. There's also a day for Latinas. Uh, Black women lose about $1,962 per month because of the wage gap, and Latinas lose $2,425 a month just due to this gap. So we still see it as a problem, wow. not only in hiring, but also in the salaries. So who's out there telling women like how to um, navigate negotiations, how to make sure that you are not being um, you know, discriminated against while you're on the job market? Do we have those mentors in place that's going to really push women forward? And that's across race, right? Across those lines. And you know what? And and I like you saying that because I will say myself, I think in terms of higher ed, I think a lot of us really haven't had the mentorship. We have, you know, had to do our own research. We have had to um, go out and uh, at times ask strangers or, you know, sit in a meeting. I once was in a meeting. Uh, I felt that something was wrong with my CV, but I didn't know what because I had been sending it out and not getting any hits. 
And I asked a colleague, uh, this is before I had my doctorate, I asked a colleague, you know, would you mind looking at my CV? It's someone that I don't even know. We were in a professional development meeting. And this person um, who had an administrative background and a teaching background was kind enough to look at my CV uh, and give me some pointers. But I'm like, um, and let me just say this person was not a black person. They weren't of color, um, but they were female. And maybe this person felt, wow, here's a woman who might be struggling and maybe no one has taught her certain things. So I'm going to give her some pointers, but I'm like, wow, you know, it's a shame that a lot of us don't have that mentorship that could get us over to the next stage or the next level seamlessly, I would say maybe as men do. Right. And it's all because of how folks still view women and the assumptions that they have, the stereotypes that they might have, what they might have seen growing up. Uh, And we're constantly looked over, right? Um, A lot of times we don't get that promotion. It is given to our male colleagues. And then once you factor in race, that does play a part in it as well. Uh, So when we think about this, are women really considered equals? What are we doing to change that narrative and make sure that they are given, or I'm saying they, but I really do mean we, that we are given that exposure, that support along the way at each and every stage. There are so many women that are nervous to apply to these doctoral programs, to apply to different positions, that imposter syndrome starts to take a hold of us. And we, and I'm saying us for a reason, and we are nervous about applying to various opportunities, whether it be the lack of the support or mentorship or guidance or just not seeing ourselves in that position because of the lack of representation. Um, There's so many different things that go along with the job market, with entering into various spaces, feeling welcomed. And even if you aren't fully welcomed, still feeling like you can exist fully. And yes, and be yourself without disclaimers and, you know, all of that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And so Dr. Griffin, thank you for that. I want to ask you, as this article has stated, um, you know, that her, that Dr. Jill Biden's doctor title is in competition with her uh, forthcoming first lady title. In other words, she should choose one or the other. And what do you, you know, have to say about that? Is that politics? Is that just once again, um, misogyny? You know, if a man were coming in, let's say Kamala, uh, Kamala Harris's husband, if he had a doctorate, would, 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 would Douglas Emhoff be asked to drop his doctorate so that he could be called second man or, or what, whatever the title is? <laughs> right. No one is even talking about this man. <laughs> Right. No one is even. (laughs) They sure are. They have left him alone. (laughs) Uh, They have left him alone completely. And we've seen this before. Right. So we saw this with uh, the Michelle Obama. We saw this with Hillary Clinton. And now we're seeing this with Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, So his words in the end of the article was saying um, your hard earned though it may have been, please consider stowing it, at least in public, at least for now. For what? Women are multifaceted. They're able to tend to attend to their children. They're able to tend to their um, job. They're able to tend to their health. Michelle Obama showed us that she was capable of doing all of that uh, and more. That's right. Uh, still showing up as a and wife, more. still showing up as herself right in her career and look at her book that took off going on a book tour after that so she's showing and she has showed us like it's possible for you to still be a mother for you to be a wife for you to be a career woman and still chase after your dreams to have or create your own seat at the table and really own your role in whatever it is um so Just seeing that there's no reason for Dr. Biden to have to choose, right? She can still have her doctorate title. When she was uh, the second 
lady, right? And um, that's during the Obama administration. She still worked full time. And it was said that she's the first second lady that we know of that worked a full time job while in that role. Uh, So she's shown us that she's capable of doing this. She's done it already. uh, And there's no reason to second guess her, right? She already has the accolades. She's not fighting to prove anything to anyone. As they say, she's not, what is it? She's uh, not new to this, she's true to this. (laughs) She is true to this. (laughs) So, you know, she's been in the White House before and she knows how to navigate it. I don't think anyone at this juncture needs to tell Dr. Biden or even Kamala Harris what to call themselves, how to present how to be, how to speak, how to, uh, what image to, these women have already reached the zenith of their careers. They're outstanding in every way. And no man, as you have mentioned, Dr. Griffin, no man with equal credentials would would be questioned in any way, shape or form, uh, whether he was going to be the vice president's uh, 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 husband in the White House, the president, or or anyone else. No, this is ridiculous, and he wouldn't be asked to choose or to drop one title. Yeah, or not another. at all. Um, Kamala Harris' husband, he's actually a lawyer, and no one asked yes. him to drop that JD, right? That Juris Doctorate. No, and <laughs> exactly. And I I read he's going to be teaching in higher ed. <laughs> Oh my so. gosh. So we see it right there. That double standard is still much so alive and present. <laughs> yes. And and just thank you so much. And Dr. Griffin, I know we're just about at time, but I definitely want to uh, ask you to please tell us where we can find you, follow you, and also support uh, black women PhDs. Yes, so I am on all social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, uh, using the um, handle Black Women PhDs, Women W O M E N um, PhDs. Make sure to add the S at the end of PhDs, uh, and I usually on I check the inbox pretty often and it's just me navigating (laughs) at this point uh so anytime you send a dm I try to go through the comments they just had that update on instagram so I'm still trying to figure that part out but (laughs) I know and it really looks weird right I haven't quite gotten used to Um, it yet I'm like, what are they yes. doing to us? I'm like, where are the comments? <laughs> I tried to right? respond. Where are like the comments? Them. Where are the followers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but definitely on social media, uh, I do this outside of my job as a professor at Fresno State. Uh, so, so it's a lot. So I try to balance both, but definitely uh, I try to be uh, as approachable as possible for sure. <laughs> Well, Dr. Griffin, you are doing an amazing job. I'm very proud of you. You are an excellent representative of of what an outstanding academic and scholar is, let alone a Black woman PhD. Um, You have your own business and you're out here repping for uh, Black women who have dared to attain this uh, achievement and accolade. And so once again, I salute you. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. I really believe this interview with your wisdom is going to inspire and bless a lot of people who really want to be on this track, Uh, women, Black women, uh, PhD, doctoral candidates, and others who support us. And so thank you once again uh, for joining me today. And I really appreciate all of your Yes, and thank you so much for having me, Dr. Frazier. I just want to say congratulations to you again. I know we recently featured you on the page. So it was great to connect and do this. Uh, And I'm I'm excited for you and all that you'll get done. Uh, This podcast you have and all the work that you're doing to support Uh, Black woman as well. So congratulations again, and thank you for having me.
Thank you so much, Dr. Griffin. I hope you have a great day and also yes, happy, happy holidays. holidays. And of course, I will continue. I will continue to follow okay, you. Perfect. And be in have touch. a good one. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. And you were just listening to episode 10 of Nerdacity Podcast, featuring my wonderful guest, Dr. Dominiqua M. Griffin, PhD, NCC. I am Dr. Duewa Frazier, the host and creator of Nerdacity Podcast. Follow the podcast on Twitter at NerdacityPod1. Follow the podcast on Instagram at Nerdacity Podcast. Also, you can support the podcast by visiting anchor.fm slash Duewa Frazier. Also visit my author site at duewaworld.com. Thanks for listening. Happy holidays and take care.